And the next item of business is members' business debate on motion 10188 in the name of Johan Lamont on Down Syndrome Awareness Week. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Joanne Lamont to open the debate around seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I would like to thank colleagues from across the Chamber for their support for this motion and for staying to attend this afternoon's debate. And indeed, I've been struck by the number of people who have given their apologies who are supportive of the issues that have been highlighted but are unable to remain for the debate itself. I regard it as an honour to be able to lead this debate. Down Syndrome Awareness Week presents us with the perfect opportunity to improve awareness, knowledge and understanding and to help society see past Down Syndrome. This week ties in with the United Nations recognised World Down Syndrome Day, which took place yesterday. It is therefore timely that we in this Parliament join in the global efforts to advocate the rights, inclusion and well-being of people with Down Syndrome. And I'm sure I'm not the only person who's been inspired by all the activities on social media and elsewhere um, highlighting... Excuse me a moment, Ms Lamont. May I ask those who are leaving the public gallery to do so quietly, please? Thank you, Ms Lamont. Um, those activities highlighting the talents and abilities of people with Down syndrome. I'd like to commend Down Syndrome Scotland for organising the special concert on Sunday evening, which formally launched the Awareness Week and raised funds for people living with Down syndrome. And I had the pleasure of attending the event and thoroughly enjoyed the show. And I'm also grateful for the information and advice Down Syndrome Scotland provided in advance of this debate. The key theme for this week's Awareness Week is inclusion in employment. Employment rates for people with disabilities, including Down syndrome, is far below the national average, as opportunities for paid employment remains limited and transition from education to the workplace continues to be a challenge. There is a need to better support transition from education to employment, as well as encouraging employers and other partners to see a person's abilities, not just Down syndrome. The prevailing negative stigma towards people with Down syndrome can result in low expectations, discrimination and exclusion, creating communities where people can find it difficult to integrate with others. Now I would reflect that there has been significant progress in attitudes from when I was a little girl. And that has been down to the work of families, of people with Down syndrome themselves, challenging people's preconceptions. And in moving forward, we need to have families and people with uh, Down syndrome at the very centre of changing policy. For despite some progress, negative assumptions and discrimination persist towards people with Down syndrome. Misconceptions include outdated ideas that people with Down syndrome are always happy, that children with Down syndrome cannot attend mainstream school, that people with Down syndrome cannot read or write, or that they cannot hold down a job. Down Syndrome Scotland published a report, Listen to Me, I Have a Voice, last year, which focused on the experience of people with Down syndrome with healthcare professionals and services. One of the recommendations is for all professionals to ensure that people with Down syndrome and their families are treated with dignity and respect by using people first language. People with Down syndrome are all unique individuals and should be acknowledged as a person first and foremost. Down syndrome is only a part of a person. And that's why we should always use people first language. For example, don't see a Down's child, see a child with Down syndrome. And it has been argued that by using the right language, we can help raise awareness and challenge negative stereotypes types of Down syndrome. Presiding officer, good transitions are crucial to guarantee successful education and employment. Awareness Week 2018 gives us an opportunity to raise the issue of transition for school leavers with Down syndrome. Down Syndrome Scotland indicates that it continues to receive feedback from families regarding the lack of support too many encountered at this crucial time. Nobody is aiming high for our kids, says one parent, while another explains that people need to feel they are useful. Successful engagement on transitions also relies on establishing trust between young people, their parents and professionals. Trust cannot be reached without good communica communication between all parties involved. Transitions can lead to anxiety and loneliness for young people and their parents who worry about the lack of opportunities. Down Syndrome Scotland has indicated it would welcome better data on positive destinations and information 
about pupils leaving school. Down Syndrome Scotland knows of some members who spent years at college and ended up with no job. Parents have also reported that, as the end of school approaches, they agree to whatever is offered to them because of a lack of options and the fear that their child will end up with nothing otherwise. That cannot be acceptable. Down Syndrome Scotland does not think that these examples can be described as a positive destination and believes that transition for pupils with Down Syndrome should be better monitored and evaluated properly to assess the help received by young people and their families at this critical time and ensure that their progress and wishes are truly supported. And I would be grateful if this is something the Minister could reflect on in the summing up. If positive destination is anything but that, then it's essential that the government acts to address this problem. Moreover, when looking at employment, and we all know how important work can be in giving people a sense of belonging and contributing to their community, people with Down syndrome say that accessing paid employment remains a significant challenge. According to the Scottish Commission for Learning Disabilities Research, the employment rate for people with a learning disability sits between 7 to 25% compared to Scotland's national employment rate of 73%. Why is that not a source of greater outrage to us all? Down Syndrome Scotland believes that stronger actions are needed to challenge negative stereotypes in society and the workplace. We all have different abilities and some young people with Down Syndrome may need more support than others to access work. However, the additional support required should not be coming a barrier to giving young people a chance to develop their skills and contribute to Scottish society. And it should be seen as a right for all young people to achieve their potential. And it's also essential to provide enough support to employers. Presiding officer, the World Down Syndrome Congress will take place in Glasgow in July of this year, and will bring together people who have Down Syndrome, their families, carers, professionals, and others who have an interest in their lives. A number of adults and young people with Down syndrome are preparing to be either commissioners or hosts for the Congress. They will play a vital role in ensuring that those attending have a truly great experience. With over 1,200 people expected to attend, I am sure everyone in the Chamber will join me in wishing the organisers and volunteers the best of luck. Securing the Congress is an amazing achievement for all those involved. And the Congress itself, I am sure, will make all the work worthwhile. All year round, Down Syndrome Scotland and its members work tirelessly to tackle stigma and encourage greater inclusion in schools, the community and working environment, enabling people to live, work and participate with confidence and independence. I hope the debate this afternoon has helped inform the, the, these issues around the challenges people with Down Syndrome face in terms of the transition from education and employment. And we're able to reflect on what we can do to help people with Down syndrome reach their full potential and respond to their energy in bringing these issues to our attention. We move to the open debate and I would ask for speeches of four minutes, please. Can I have Kenneth Gibson followed by Brian Whittle? Presiding officer, and I thank Joanne Lamont for securing debating time on this matter during Down Syndrome Awareness Week providing an opportunity to highlight the societal contribution made by and issues affecting people with Down syndrome in Scotland and beyond. With approximately one in every thousand babies born with a condition, Down syndrome is the most frequently recognised form of learning disability. It occurs randomly at the point of conception and affects males and females alike. As it is such a common feature of our society, this week also offers a chance to commend the essential services provided by organisations and individuals across the country working to improve the lives of people with Down syndrome. Perhaps the most influential of these organisations in Scotland is Down Syndrome Scotland, a parent-led charity established in 1982 with the vision of creating a society that fully accepts people with the condition. They are currently the only charity in Scotland dedicated solely to supporting people with Down Syndrome and their carers, providing all through life support across Scotland. With eight branches across, the, uh, across Scotland, the charity provides constant support and a wide range of clubs and activities thanks to their dedicated volunteers aiming to assist families and individuals through fellowship and friendship. The key theme for this year's Awareness Week is inclusion and employment. Selected as employment rates for people with disabilities fall far below the national average, as uh, Joanne Lamont indicated. 
Opportunities for paid employment remain limited, while transition from education to the workplace continues to be a challenge. Therefore, the transition must be eased and employers encouraged to see a person's abilities, not just their condition. Over the past few years, the Scottish Government has worked towards improving the quality of life of people with Down syndrome through important strategies such as the Keys to Life or A Fairer Scotland for Disabled People. Nonetheless, recent reports show more work is needed in implementation. Regarding Down syndrome, eradicating stigma is important. To do so, DSS recommended using People First language which acknowledges individuals with Down syndrome as people first and foremost, not defined by their condition. All eyes will be on Scotland this July when the SECC will host the Triennial World Down Syndrome Conference, dealing with topics of experience, research and practice, widening opportunities and improving lives. The World Congress will bring together people with Down syndrome, their families, carers and others with an interest in their lives. Well over a thousand delegates are expected to attend a four day event and the Congress will be a fantastic opportunity to highlight the progress being made internationally and for those from different walks of life and diverse backgrounds to share their experiences. Raising awareness of Down syndrome this week can take many forms, be it, be it wearing odd socks, holding a tea for 21 party, attending an awareness event, making a charitable donation or simply sharing a hashtag on social media. Online negativity and harassment may seem all too prevalent, yet digital content which facilitates positive discourse can have far-reaching effects. In fact, just last week, two videos sharing a positive message surrounding Down syndrome went viral. A video of five-year-old Chloe Lennon from Irvine Ayrshire has been shared more than 330,000 times across the world, racking up over 10 million views. In the video posted by her mum, Jade, she explains that World Down Syndrome Awareness Day is on 21st of March, encouraging people to wear odd socks that day as part of the Lots of Socks celebration. The video had an inspiring effect with thousands of positive comments and messages flooding in. In addition, a group of 50 mothers of children with Down Syndrome collaborated on a carpool karaoke style video to raise awareness and help change attitudes. The video called 50 mums, 50 kids, one extra chromosome is being shared with the hashtag wouldn't change a thing and carries a heartwarming and powerful message about disability, diversity and inclusion. One mother who participated in this project said, we wouldn't change our children, but we want to change the world for our children. Presiding officer, I'm sure any parent can empath empathise with this statement and in a more universal sense, an increasingly inclusive society is something we all ought to strive towards. As such, marking this week with debates such as this is incredibly important. The reaction to these videos is testament to the fact that visibility truly matters and proves we must work together to ensure our society reflects the needs of all. Call Brian Whittle to be followed by David Stewart. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can I also uh, thank Joanne Lambert for bringing this debate to the Chamber, and I'm grateful to have the opportunity to contribute. I know Down syndrome is discussed as a disability, and firstly, I wanted to highlight again that that word, uh, disability, to me is a misnomer. Time and again, we are reminded of the contribution to our society that the so-called disability community give us. Just last week, for example, we lost one of the greatest minds of our time in Prof Professor Stephen Hawkins, who I don't think anybody could deny had an astonishing impact on our understanding of physics, cosmology, and the universe, no less. And the Winter, Olympics, uh, Winter Paralympics have just concluded with athletes, including those from these shores, performing at the very highest level of physical and mental ability. Ability indeed on show for all of us to marvel at. Now, I have to say I have been lucky enough in my time to have coached, in fact, I still coach athletes in Paralympic sport and the Special Olympics, as well as the so-called able-bodied. They all train together in squad sessions, and although they are individuals, they all have individual nuances, because every single athlete I have ever coached is an individual with individual traits and abilities. So please, I would res respectfully suggest that we start talking about ability, not disability. Now, this gives me the opportunity to discuss uh, local Ayrshire heroine uh, Fiona Davidson, a young woman with Down syndrome often seen by the side of Presswick Swimming Pool, where she volunteers as a swim coach for children and adults alike. Fiona is also a member of the Team GB's Paralympic team, having travelled the world uh, in pursuit of sporting excellence and also works part-time in an office and a shop. And as, as was highlighted in Joanne Lamont's speech, uh, she is in a minority uh, of adults uh, with learning disabilities in paid employment. So I think it's entirely appropriate in Down Syndrome Awareness Week that we take this opportunity to highlight as much as we possibly can this anomaly. 
And I think this is in part uh, due to the fact that employers are unaware that there may be support for them uh, when employing people who have specific needs. Indeed, uh, Jeremy Balfour and I uh, uh, delivered a workshop in East Ayrshire to local employers highlighting the many benefits of having a workforce which reflects society and that having a so-called disability does not detract from a person's ability in the workplace. It was obvious that many employers in the room had a view of the disability workforce that was contrary to this reality. And I would commend my colleague Jeremy Balfour for effectively changing the perception in that room for many. Now, Fiona has spoken of her experiences saying that the public are actually terrified of disability in general. It is a label, she says, and it's very hard for the public to find the person behind the label. This is what we are helping to tackle today in this chamber, and I would suggest that is why this debate is so important. We need to show potential employees and, and the general public at large that we are all different. We all have abilities and disabilities. Some are visible and some are not. The ability to work and support, one, support oneself, which again, uh, Joanne highl uh, highlighted, uh, speaks to confidence and resilience and self-belief in every walk of life. And I think it's incumbent upon us in this place to do all we can to ensure that inclusion means exactly that and that any barriers, real or perceived, are removed. I know that Fiona would like to follow her voluntary work uh, as a swim coach with a position that affords her a paid coaching position now that she has qualified. She has an obvious talent which should be deployed to the best of her ability and to the benefit of society as a whole. Presiding officer, can I end where I started in that this discussion should always be about ability, not disability. For the around 750 babies a year born with Down syndrome, we owe it to them, just as we owe it to every other person, an equal opportunity to explore their talents and passions, to do the very best to the very best of their abilities and make to the, uh, the contribution to society that they surely can. Presenting officer. I call David Stewart to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and could I also congratulate Joanne Lamont for bringing this important debate to the Chamber and for her excellent speech. Sadly, as I'm sure many here are aware, historically the treatment of those with Downs and their families makes for upsetting reading. Due to the lack of knowledge or understanding about the disorder, the medical recommendations to parents throughout the 1960s and even the 1970s was for children born with Down syndrome to be institutionalised. Today, care in the community is now encouraged for most conditions wherever possible. Yet for Downs, the transformation in public attitudes is thanks to the brave and determined parents who have championed the rights of their children over the past decade and continue to do, to, uh, continue to do so today. Organisations such as Down Syndrome Scotland also do fantastic work in changing the perceptions of what life with Downs is actually like. Uh, a life that can be truly fulfilling, yes, with challenges, but what life isn't. And throughout this week, there have been numerous stories of families and inspiring individuals who live and thrive with Down syndrome. Journalist Jamie McCallum, writing the Sunday Herald, notes that despite what he first expected when his daughter Rosie was born, his family is more similar to other families than is different. This week of awareness about the condition is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate individuals who have Downs and also appreciate how far as a society we have come. That's not to say that there isn't much more work that could be done. Although there is much more information available to parents in the 1960s, we must ensure that it's adequately communicated. Down syndrome can come with various disabilities and increased likelihood of health problems, including heart conditions, visual impairments, and thyroid problems. Equipping and informing parents of these possibilities and how to handle them is essential to ensuring that every Downs child has the best possible start in life. It's crucial that our health professionals are able to advise parents uh, and, that, and point out where care is available. This is especially true in rural areas like my own region in Highlands and Islands, where specialised care often has limited access. Organisations like Down Syndrome Scotland provide vital networks for families and young people to connect and support each other. And previous speakers have referred to the World uh, Down Syndrome Congress taking place in Glasgow in July. This is a fantastic example and encouraged to hear of the opportunities for Scottish young people to participate as commissioners and hosts. Yet many support organisations have grown from the grassroots out of necessity. Parents are sharing their experience with each other to fill the gap. Gaps that will only widen where local services and, and support suffer under austerity. The dramatic drop in ASN teachers within our schools, a fall of 15.9% in the last five years despite rising needs, is a prime example and one that we can't just shrug off. A lack of support and education will impact uh, children with Downs now 
and also in later life. So early in intervention is important, but often the focus is solely on the care and support that is given to families. As with all the population, with improvements in health care and treatment, the life expectancy for those with Downs is increasing. And it is right that those who are living into their 60s and 70s are naturally seeking more out of their lives. There are therefore serious questions to be asked about how we can support ind individuals with a condition in adult life. Now, despite changing public attitudes, individuals with Downs will face a real employment gap, as Joanne Lamont stated in her speech. Many find it difficult to work uh, and find work that is long-term and secure. And it is this face of evidence that individuals with Downs must make valuable team members. We need employers to take responsibility for encouraging the potential of those with learning disabilities and offering them real opportunities. After all, in conclusion, President Officer, as American educator and businessman Stephen uh, Colville said, strength lies in differences, not in similarities. Alex Cole Hamilton, followed by Kate Forbes. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to start as well by echoing Chamber's thanks to Joanne Lamont for this really important debate. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. I, I love the fact that the gimmick for Down Syndrome Awareness Week is to wear odd socks. It turns out, Deputy Presiding Officer, that I've actually been marking uh, Down Syndrome Awareness Week every single day of the year. Um, but we have to recognise the importance of events like this and helping, as the, the wider narrative around this week goes, to help society see past Down syndrome. And while I will come on to the, the, this year's theme of employment, I just want to stay for a moment on that idea of getting society to see past Down syndrome, because in each case of every one of my friends or co-workers or people I'm acquainted with who have Down syndrome, I have always seen such industry, such creativity, compassion, a, capa a capacity for romance and great humour, so that we should all, in weeks like this, remember that those people who live among us, our neighbours, our friends with Downs, just represent a different kind of normal. But society is rigged differently, and it doesn't recognise that different kind of normal. And I think that's why we're here today to challenge that. And from conception, the odds can be stacked against people with Down syndrome. And I will stray into a slightly sensitive area here. Now, I don't want for a minute to challenge a parent's decision not to proceed with a pregnancy when Downs is detected. That should always be their right. But that should not be the default assumption of medical staff who are offering them advice at that time. We need to un equip our medical staff with an understanding and uh, a, a way of speaking to parents when at that difficult time of decision making to scotch the idea that Downs is somehow a life sentence. And I'm very much grateful to my constituent, Lynn Murray, who's done a lot of research and work to work with the medical profession to, to manage that conversation. It's about challenging stigma ev at every single form of life for someone with Downs. And assumptions that, um, that we all, at some point through popular culture, have paid into. And it's right that this year's theme should be inclusion in employment, because in terms of independent living, which is, I think, the aspiration of every family with somebody affected by Down syndrome, then employment is the absolute central pillar to their ability to live independently. With employment, you can have a social network, feelings of self-worth, feelings of fulfillment, and financial independence. There's, there are very few other tenets of society that we all aspire to, but that, that is absolutely one of them. And I think as an MSP for a constituency in our nation's capital, I'm very proud of the many businesses and social enterprises which have actually gone out of their way to recruit not just people with Down syndrome, but other learning difficulties as well. Just up the hill, I for many years worked alongside people in the engine shed, which is a great social was a great social enterprise, uh, working with particularly with people with Down syndrome. So we know that with any learning difficulties in our society, we have a parlous postcode lottery attached to support, that sometimes um, we don't get the support that families need to, to help their children who have Downs through the transitions that we've heard about today and into employment, which is obviously this year's uh, theme. So I want to thank Joanne again for today's debate. It's absolutely vital, and we don't just mark Down syndrome once a year through the Down Syndrome Awareness Week, but keep it in our minds in everything that we do in our chamber. Because as I said at the top of my remarks, being living with Downs, having Downs is just a different kind of normal. Thank you.
I call Kate Forbes to be followed by Alexander Stewart. Officer, by the video earlier this week of 50 parents uh, doing carpool karaoke with their precious children. They were full of life and fun, singing along by lip syncing or using makatome. And that was a little glimpse into families with Down syndrome, with, to the enthusiasm, the laughter, and also the tears and frustrations. And that's why World Down Syndrome Day is so important, because it teaches the rest of us a little bit more about Down syndrome and all that comes with it. Direct experience makes all the difference in the world. As Jamie McCallum wrote at the weekend, uh, he was an individual who helped to create that video and whose daughter, Rosie, was born with Down syndrome five years ago. He wrote that that experience transported me personally from spouting liberal platitudes on the periphery to centre stage first-hand experience of the major shifts against society's most vulnerable in recent years. And that is the significance of Down Syndrome Day because it gives parents a, a platform to talk about the reality. There have been huge changes over the last few decades. When my uncle was born with Down Syndrome in the 70s, my grandfather was told not to worry because there were places that would take him and he didn't need to put up with him. That was only 40 years ago, and we've gone from uh, a life sentence of to an institution to people with Down syndrome now living very full lives. Um, the hashtag for this uh, video of the 50 mums doing carpool karaoke was that they wouldn't change a thing. And that is so true. My uncle celebrated his 50th birthday last year, just past his 51st. 40 years ago, the life expectancy was probably into the mid-20s. Now, people are expected to live to, to 60 and beyond. At the turn of the century, in the 1900s, the life expectancy was nine years. So there has been huge um, progress made. And the fun, whether it's at my uncle's 50th, which Alexander Stewart was also at, um, whether it's these um, events, whether it's birthday parties or just spending time with my uncle and his friends who also have Down syndrome. It's incredible fun. They are unpretentious. They are happy. They could teach us so much about love and about care. Now, it's not always happy. Despite that, 97% of families um, with uh, an individual in their family with Down syndrome say that they are far happier for having the condition in their lives. And that is why, and I say this very, very carefully, that it is heartbreaking that the figure for terminations is 94% of babies with Down syndrome. And to quote Jamie again, that means that 94% of people are opting out of something that has a 97% chance of making their, them happier. And that's where there's so much more work to do in terms of raising awareness of what life is really like with Down syndrome. You don't suffer it. Uh, people have Down syndrome. We need to improve counselling and guidance to parents who are, are facing this very difficult choice. And I do not underestimate the difficulty of that choice. And then supporting parents and families and people with Down syndrome through all the ups and downs, the highs and lows and the opportunities and challenges. We think we are wise, normal and fine. And yet we are shamed by people who are happier, more loving and arguably more normal than those of us who, who stress and work and strive um, about absolute trivia. My uncle is always ready with a smile and a handshake, often while the rest of us are cringing as he goes up to thank the, the staff at a restaurant or whatever for their service, and we want the ground to swallow us up. He does not believe that there can be anything bad from anybody in this world. And I think that that is a far more normal state to be in than the normal that we claim. Alexander Stewart has the last con open debate contribution. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to be able to participate today and congratulate John Lamont on securing this debate. 
As we've already heard, we all here recognise the importance of Down Syndrome Awareness Week, and indeed this awareness should be encouraged beyond many of these promotional activities. I am always proud to highlight the contribution made by, and indeed the issues that affect people with Down Syndrome. It is what they can do, not what they cannot do, that we should be focusing on. They want employment, they want to go to college, they want to engage uh, their own talents. And unlocking their potential gives them the opportunity uh, to develop their self-esteem, their independence and their commitment. And we should do all we can to support them in doing that. Deputy Presiding Officer, over the last 20 years, it has been my privilege to have worked closely with a number of organisations who are actively involved with individuals with Down syndrome. These groups valued the, the root uh, in civil liberty and rights for individuals and also benefit from people living with all types of learning difficulties and disabilities. But Down syndrome is one, as I say, that I've had a special uh, relationship with. Uh, and that was through my association with Arc Housing. Uh, an unprofitable organisation that helps individuals uh, uh, who do have learning difficulties. And they have 400 properties across 13 local authorities uh, and employ about 1,000 staff. Uh, and they support people to live good lives at home and also in the communities and who require assistance uh, within that. And they get the chance to have make some choices. Many members with Down syndrome give and want the opportunity within their life to have chances, chances to work, chances to be included, and chances to support. And we should do all we can because they can make a massive contribution to the communities that they live and represent. ARC provided them with care and support to ensure that they could unlock their potential. And it was my privilege to see that potential unlocked in many individuals, including Kate Forbes' uh, uncle. The second organisation I've been involved with is the Stepping Stones Theatre Company, a highly acclaimed drama group uh, that worked across Perth and Kinross. Uh, and I had the privilege of being a, a chairman of that organisation, uh, and I still attend many of their events. Drama, dance and performing helps in so many ways, and the company is full of many stars who light up the stage with their amazing performances. Down syndrome is one of the most frequently recognised uh, forms of learning disability. Approximately one in every thousand babies worldwide is born with Downs. We've heard that already. Uh, uh, and it is a, a disease uh, that is seen, and as others have talked about today, that has developed. Uh, individuals live longer. Uh, they contribute more. Uh, in the past, it could have been seen as a, a life sentence to the family. Uh, nowadays, it's seen as something much more. Uh, Downs is a life changing situation and does not have a cure, but there is a myriad of ways to ensure that individual people who have Downs are afforded the correct type of level of support and they individually need to develop their full potential. The events that are taking place across uh, Glasgow and uh, uh, the, the event that is taking place later on in the year in Glasgow when the Down Syndrome uh, Congress comes are fantastic because once again that gives a platform, that gives an opportunity for us to stand up and be recognised and support. So in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, it is to this end that I believe everybody mm -hmm. should have the opportunity to lead a happy, healthy and safe life, whatever their individual circumstances. I am I have truly been inspired by many individuals who I have had the opportunity to work with over the years who have Down syndrome. And I would encourage everyone to take time to become a friend of a person with Down syndrome because it will truly be an enlightening situation for them and something that I have endured and enjoyed immensely, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you. I now call Maureen Watt to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank Joanne Lamond for her member's motion bringing Down Syndrome Awareness Week to, the attend to our attention today. And I'd also like to thank members from across the chamber for their speeches in what has been a, in an important debate in raising awareness of Down Syndrome. I'd also like to thank Gillian Martin for her member's motion congratulating the Fra Francis family from tariff on raising more than a thousand pounds for Down Syndrome Scotland by hosting a coffee morning in the town. We should say well down to the Francis family. And thank you also to Ruth Maguire for her motion on congratulations to five-year-old Chloe Len Len Lennon from Castle Park in Irvine on her outstanding achievement 
in being selected as the UK's ambassador for the US-based charity Nothing Down. Chloe and other ambassadors hoped that people worldwide would wear odd socks for World Down Syndrome Awareness Day as part of the Lot of Socks celebration. And we all wish Chloe the very best for the future. And this morning, presiding officer, I was at Ayrshire College in Kilmarnock, where just last week, the college's very own Lauren Gemmell was awarded the NUS Scotland Student of the Year Award. Lauren is a stunning example of what can be achieved by someone with Downs. Today, we celebrate Down Syndrome Awareness Week by focusing on the theme, as others have said, inclusion in employment. We recognise the variety of events that are underway this week and congratulate all involved. And I would like to offer my personal thanks to Down Syndrome Scotland for hosting Down Syndrome Awareness Week and for all of their work in supporting families and peoples with Down Syndrome to reach their full potential. Um, they do so much, as David Stewart highlighted, in highlighting and signposting families and individuals to the support and opportunities available for those with Downs. As the Minister responsible for the Learning Disability Portfolio, I've been privileged to hear of the valuable contribution people who have Down syndrome make across Scotland. Contributions across Civic Scotland in areas such as Brian Whittle and, uh, alluded to in his speech, sport, culture, transport and education. It is in all areas of life that people who have Down syndrome in Scotland want to contribute. And like Kate Forbes, I am personally aware from da of Down syndrome from a very young age, as my mom's, one of my mum's cousins was a woman with Downs who lived to the age of 60 and died within the last uh, 10 years. But like Kate Forbes' uncle, uh, she brought joy and laughter to our lives. Down syndrome is the single biggest cause of learning disability. We have heard today of the significant improvements in the lives of people with learning disabilities. Moving beyond our shameful past of Victorian care to valuing the contributions people who have Down syndrome make. We've made vast strides, uh, strides in achieving change. However, work still needs to be done. As the delivery period of Scotland's learning disability strategy, the keys to life, reaches its halfway stage, there is a once in a lifetime opportunity to realize transformational change as the first generation of young adults with learning disabilities come of age since the closure of the last long stay hospitals in Scotland. How we respond to this opportunity will influence the fortunes of future generations. And I couldn't agree more with Joanne Lamont on the need to have better transitions um, between primary school and secondary school, but into the work of an empl employment. And despite the principles of Good Transitions 3, Down syndrome and others have noted the lack of support. And that's why the SCLD set up the Employment Task Force following their employability report. It is true that everyone, like, uh, every, like everyone else, people with Down syndrome have the same aspirations and skills and the same uh, uh, aspirations and should have the same opportunities as everyone else. And I believe that transformational change that we need to happen will only happen if a whole system, whole population and whole person approach is taken and that's why my officials are working with Ms Freeman's officials responsible for the Fairer Scotland Disability Delivery Plan and a range of key partners including Down Syndrome Scotland to set out this government's ambition for the next phase of the Keys to Life Delivery. Achieving this ambition will require concerted effort from across a range of policy areas. Of course. Joanne Lamont. Can I acknowledge the conversations you're having with um, Dean Freeman in her, in her responsibilities? Can you outline what conversations you've had or discussions that are ongoing with the, the Minister responsible for employment and fair work 
because it seems to me there's a big issue here about challenging employers about their responsibilities and for us to ensure that our thinking on employment and fair work includes the rights and entitlements of people with disabilities. Maureen Watt. Joanne Lamont's absolutely right and we ha are having those conversations and I think it was Joanne Lamont herself mentioned about the importance of reducing stigma among employers and others to give people those life chances uh, that, that they need because, you know, if you take Lauren Gemmell who is studying marketing, are employers going to see her skills in marketing rather than her downs? And that's the challenge uh, to employers. So Joanne Lamont is absolutely right. So every person, as I said, in Scotland with a learning disability, including those who have Down syndrome, has the right to lead a meaningful life. Um, but despite improvements in the lives of people who have Down syndrome, we know that many people do experience that uh, negative stigma that is still around. And it is crucial to recognise that Down syndrome is only part of a person and the people first language that, uh, again, Joanne Lamont talked about, should always be used. A child with Down syndrome is just that, a child first and foremost. During July this year, as uh, Alexander Stewart and others have mentioned, Scotland will host the 13th World Down Syndrome Congress in Glasgow. It's led by Down Syndrome Scotland and the Congress will offer a unique environment to share experience and learning with families from all over the world. The event will enable families to feel part of a global community and connect with people from diverse cultures, backgrounds and communities who face similar challenges and concerns to their own. The most recent Triennial Congress was held in Chennai, India during 2015 and a team from Down Syndrome Scotland travelled to Chennai to promote the Congress in Glasgow and to take part in the official handover ceremony. During the ceremony, a film of the First Minister being interviewed by Andrew McIntyre, a, a man with Down Syndrome, was shown. Now, Andrew is one of the three leading commissioners in a team of 12 commissioners, all of whom have Down Syndrome and all of whom are participating in a specific training programme funded by the Scottish Government in the lead up to the Congress. Earlier this week, the commissioners ran training sessions for over 200 for participants from Glasgow's ta taxi and hospitality sectors, with a further 150 expected to participate in future sessions before the Congress takes place. An estimated uh, 1,250 delegates are expected to attend the Congress. People who have Down syndrome will be supported to be involved in all aspects of the delivery of the Congress. Yesterday, on the 21st of March, we marked World Down Syndrome Awareness Day, a symbolic date reflecting the scientific advances in understanding the causes of Down Syndrome. Du during 2012, the Secretary General of the United Nations stated, on this day, let us reaffirm that persons with Down Syndrome are entitled to the full and effective enjoyment of all human rights and fundamental freedoms. Let us each do our part to enable children and persons with Down syndrome to participate fully in the development and life of their societies on an equal basis with others. Let us build an inclusive society for all. Let us across this chamber echo those words today and reaffirm our commitment in this parliament to work together to achieve transformational lives, change in the lives of each and every person in Scotland who has Down syndrome. Committing to seeing every person as a person, as an individual with talent and a valuable contribution to make. Thank you. That concludes the debate and the meeting is suspended until half past two.